Hey Kappa, it's Coach Aaron Shino here, and in this video today, we are gonna be learning all things basketball shooting and all the different types of shots. Things you're gonna need, you are going to need some nice open space, hopefully outside, so you're not shooting the ball into your ceiling or into the walls or anything. You're gonna need a basketball, either with or without bells in it, and we would love if you had a basketball hoop or a basketball net. If you don't have that, that is okay. We could still work on our shooting form. You're just not gonna know if the ball is actually going in the rim, uh, but we could definitely still work on your form. Okay, to start off, I am going to be showing you the different parts of a basketball hoop because you're going to be hearing me reference them later in this lesson for the different shots. Basketball hoop. On the screen now is an average basketball hoop. The first part of the hoop that I want to point out is the flat rectangular piece that is called the backboard. This backboard is white and is outlined in orange. The green arrow is now pointing at a round, circular, metal piece of the backboard called the rim. This is located in the center of the backboard at the very bottom. The green arrow is now pointing toward a smaller rectangle on the backboard. This is outlined in orange and is called the box. For certain types of shots, aiming your shot towards this box will help the shot go in the rim. Jump shot. All right, everybody, first off, we're going to talk about the jump shot. This is a very common type of shot in basketball. Almost all three pointers and most of two point shots are shot using the jump shot. So in order to perform this shot, you're gonna hold the ball in the fingertips of your dominant hand. The ball is going to be towards the front of your face, maybe slightly over to your right side of your body or your dominant side of your body. Your elbow should be directly underneath the ball, not sticking out, but directly under the ball. Your other hand, so for me, that's my left hand, is going to be a support hand. So that ball is just gonna rest on the side, on the left side of the ball, helping to guide it up as I shoot. If you're younger, sometimes you use a little force from that left hand, but as you get older, that left hand actually comes off the ball before you release it off your fingertips. So when you shoot, you're going to wanna bend your knees a little bit. The ball is still in front of my face here. And as I jump up into the air, I'm going to extend my right arm. And when I reach the top of my shot, I'm going to flick my wrist for the ball to roll off, traveling towards the rim. My follow through is going to be where my arm is straight out in front of me and my fingertips are pointing down toward the ground. In this photo, the ball is in Coach Shino's right hand fingertips. She is preparing to take her shot and her left hand is helping the ball stay in place. Her knees are bent and she is getting ready to jump. In this photo, Coach Shino has jumped off the ground and her right arm is extended. The ball is in the air in motion on the way to the rim. And in this photo, Coach Shino has landed back on the ground and her right arm is extended with her follow through position. Her wrist is bent and her fingers are pointing downward. This is a video of Coach Shino practicing her jump shot. This is a two point jump shot because she is inside of the three point arc. Here, Coach Shino is practicing her jump shot with some three-point shots because she is standing outside of the three-point arc. She still uses the same form and keeps her elbow tucked in under the ball during the entire jump shot motion. Good. Bank shot. Okay, so when you take a bank shot, it is going to be the same exact form that you use with a jump shot. In fact, a bank shot is a form of a jump shot, except instead of trying to go directly into the rim, a bank shot, you are going to aim for that smaller rectangular box that is on the backboard. This is usually done when you're about 45 degree, you're at like a 45 degree angle of the basket and helping it bank off that backboard will help the ball drop right into the rim. In this video, Coach Shino is standing about 10 feet away from the rim at a 45 degree angle from the hoop. She is, instead of aiming right for the rim, she is aiming for the corner of that little white box that is on the backboard. The ball should ricochet off the backboard and go directly into the rim. Free throw. 
All right, the next type of shot we're gonna talk about is a free throw. This is also known as a foul shot because this is the type of shot that you get to shoot after someone fouls you while you are in the act of shooting. There's also a couple other times when you can shoot a free throw, but for right now, let's just talk about what we wanna do when we are taking a free throw. All right, the next type of shot we're gonna talk about is a free throw. This is also known as a foul shot because this is the type of shot that you get to shoot after someone fouls you while you are in the act of shooting. There's also a couple other times when you can shoot a free throw, but for right now, let's just talk about what we wanna do when we are taking a free throw. Koshino dribbles the ball three times, spins it and bounces it one more time before she collects herself with a deep breath and then swishes her free throw. Again, notice how Koshino bends her knees and still extends to gain some power, but her feet never leave the ground. Just like a jump shot, Koshino holds her follow through after the ball is released from her hand. Layup. All right, the next type of shot we're gonna talk about is the layup. Unlike the jump shot and the free throw, when you perform a layup, instead of standing and jumping straight up, a layup is usually done moving towards the basket. So when you are performing a layup, you are going to take your last dribble and then you are allowed two steps. So if I was taking a right-handed layup, I would take my last dribble, hold that ball in my right hand, take a big step with my right foot, big step with my left foot, and then my right knee would power me up to the, up to the basket and as I am going toward the basket, I am going to bank, yes, like with bank shot, you're going to hit the ball off that corner of the box on the backboard and it will fall right into the rim. Let's take a look at a layup being performed on the basketball court. So when you're doing a layup, you're gonna take that last dribble and for a right-handed layup on the right side of the basket, you're gonna take two steps. The first one is going to be with your right foot, the second step is going to be with your left foot. And then from here, you're gonna use your right knee and drive up toward the basket and jump off of your left leg. When you jump off of your left leg, you're gonna shoot the ball with your right hand off the corner of the box on the backboard and it should fall right into the rim. It's important to note that whichever side you are taking your layup on, you should shoot the ball predominantly with that hand. So if you are taking a left-handed layup, the ball should be more in your left hand than it is in your right hand. Also, when you take those two steps, the first step should be the foot of whatever side of the basket you are on. So if you are taking a left-handed layup, the first step should be with your left foot, the second step would be with your right foot, and your left knee would be the one driving into the air. Here's a close-up of the ball bouncing off of that white box on the backboard. And once it bounces off that corner, it should fall right into the rim. Okay, the next type of uh, shot we're going to talk about is a very advanced shot. This is called the reverse layup. So once you have the layup down, um, if you have a defender in front of you trying to stop you from taking that layup, a reverse layup is a very cool move that you can introduce into your basketball play. So when you do a reverse layup, it's essentially the same thing as a normal layup, except you are going to take an extra dribble that puts you under the basket and your two steps are gonna kind of bring you around to the other side of the basket coming from underneath. And you, as you are in the air, you are gonna turn and shoot that layup. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Here Koshino's last dribble is right under the rim. She takes her two steps and as she is shooting, she's kind of turning towards the inside of the court to shoot her reverse layup off the left side of the box on the backboard. This next type of shot we're going to talk about is a shot that I wish that I could do, but I cannot because I'm only 5'10 and can't jump like that. But it is very common for teams pictured here, like the 2020 NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers, to be able to dunk the basketball. So let's talk a little bit more about the slam dunk. When you dunk the basketball, you are jumping high enough for your hand to slam the ball through the rim rather than shoot it through the rim. So instead of hope, 
throwing the ball and hoping it goes in the rim. With a dunk, you are placing the ball through the rim. This is one of the most high percentage shots because typically when you're dunking the ball, it is going to go through that rim. Here's a video of my student Bryson dunking the basketball. He takes two big steps, elevates, and his hand is above the rim to slam the ball into the rim for two points. Wow, that is a lot of different types of shots, and now it's time for you to go and practice. If you have a basketball hoop, I want you to go out and start nice and close. Try the different types of shots, the layup, the jump shot, the bank shot, or a free throw. And as you get more comfortable, you can add some more distance to your shot. Okay, if you do not have a hoop, that is totally okay. Instead, we are gonna be working on just our form. So you can take your basketball and still head outside, and I want you to practice your shooting. So imagine where the rim would be. Um, again, start off with some small shots, and then as you get that form, you can try to feel what it feels like to shoot a longer and longer shot. You can have somebody stand there and clap for you so you know what you're aiming for.